So what is each first round pick in the 2023 dynasty class worth? Right. What could you trade these guys away for today, oh, right God. now, cold, hard cash? Well, that's what we're looking at today. Cold we are looking cash. at what each pick is worth. Realistic <laughs> trades that you can make if you don't want to draft a player for right. whatever reason. So we're going to go from the 101 to the 112. We're going to do absolute best. Do us a favor. Drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And comment down below. What is a pick that you have and you're not sure what to do? Hopefully this video might help and, and give you some direction. Hopefully. All right. I'm going to start with the 101. We're going to go opposites. I got odds. You got evens. Mm -hmm. With the 101, I, I took this from a couple of different perspectives with this video, uh, which was positionally. Like, okay, let's say you have the 101 yeah. and you need a quarterback. Exactly. Well, if, you know, this is possible, I would say try and go get Lamar Jackson. Right now, we have seen a ton of trades for Lamar Jackson um, in our dynasty uh, in our Discord, rather, over a 1,000 people, I think over 1,200 people in there, and we are seeing Lamar Jackson go for deals that we like, Badaki. We keep looking at those deals and saying, hmm, I know he's, you know, I know he's 26 years old. I know he's a rushing quarterback, but I, I like the deals that we're seeing for him. So I think that is the most premium quarterback that you can get for the 101 right now. You think about a dynasty startup draft, right? All those quarterbacks are going off the board before we see Bijan go in a dynasty startup draft. So it makes a lot of sense as to where that line is kind of drawn. I don't think you get a Trevor Lawrence. It's worth discussing, but I don't think you get a Trevor Lawrence right now. So I would say Lamar Jackson is probably the best quarterback you could get for the 101 at this very at this very point. Yeah. Now let's say you need a wide receiver. There's two options I think you can go out and get, which I have seen people send to us personally over on Patreon as well as through our Discord. CD Lamb. CD Lamb makes a lot of sense. Again, I think about a dynasty startup draft. I am seeing Bijan Robinson and CD Lamb swap pretty consistently as right. far as who is taken first. I think it's pretty even value. You and I did believe that CD Lamb was an elite wide receiver before this season. I think he absolutely proved that. And I don't think someone who's going to come in and compliment him is going to take away his role. I think he's proved he is one of the best wide receivers, at least the top 10 in, in real life and definitely top five in dynasty. The other player that you could look at is A.J. Brown. I'm not obsessed with that move. Okay. I'm not obsessed with it, but I think you you can get that move done. Um, again, it is possible. Now, look, it, I prefer C.D. Lamb in that scenario, but those are, those are two options that you could do. Mm -hmm. If you need a running back, don't overthink it. Don't be stupid. Draft B. John Robinson because there's not a running back that you can trade for that is more valuable than B. John Robinson. So if you need a running back and you have the one-on-one, stay pat and take a running back. I wanted to look at a couple of trades that happened in our Discord. These are real trades that happened from you guys where people got the one-on-one. So uh, let's have a look at some of these trades. The first one's from Brady Q. He got the 101 and he sent away cmc and zay jones and i have been saying this quite often on our channel hey if you can go send cmc for the 101 and grab Bijan robinson do that right now because right. i don't think Bijan is going to be any less valuable than he is right here right now and that's not to say that christian mccaffrey is not a very good like elite running back for the next couple of years but i want to i want to get Bijan robinson as a rookie, I I, I want to see this career arc from him. So yeah, I like that he was able to do that. I have a couple other trades here where we saw someone get the 101. They sent the 103 and the 105. That's a difficult one to uh, to address. I'm just I'm not going to grade these. I'm just showing you what other people have done. We have another trade here where someone was able to get Patrick Mahomes, and I think this was well worth the deal. I mean, they sent away Jamison Williams, who I love, but. Brian Robinson and Sam Howell are not players that are going to move a needle for me. So the, in this scenario, uh, it's a super flex league. I'm definitely taking Pat Mahomes. And then the, the last one that I saw, which I'm not obsessed with. I think I would, I would probably sell the one one for this price. Right. Justin Herbert, the one one Devonte Adams and the other side got Joe Mixon, Josh Allen, Amon Ross St. Brown, Romeo Dobbs in a second. And it's not that I devalue Justin Herbert at all. I just think getting a Monroe St. Brown and Joe Mixon, this is a close, man. This is a close one. But anyway, I'm not here to discuss these trades and their value. I'm just here to show you what yeah. uh, is possible and what we have seen so far. So what are we thinking from the 102 perspective, Badaki? Yeah, 102, basically the same similar thought process as Zach. We're going to go back and forth. Like he said, 
102. So I'm going through positional values, right? So what you can get for the 102 and what, what you can get for, for them, right? And my first thought process, if you need a quarterback, right, off the top, you're thinking, okay, CJ or Bryce, and it all depends on how you value it. But at the moment, Kyler Murray is a pretty even deal to kind of get at the 102 here. All depends on how you would view him and how, how you perceive that ACL injury, right? And I think you can even get him even cheaper. But I just wanted to put it out there. If you are somebody that kind of goes, and we're just using this as a reference, right? You probably see the the screenshot on your screen. If you are using, you know, keep trade cut as a Bible, then you can kind of take advantage of something like this right now at the 102. All depends on how you would want that. To me, I think that could be a win-win wide receiver right now for me. Garrett Wilson at the 102, you might have to swing the deal a little bit. You might have to throw just a maybe an a end of the third type deal. So the 102 and, and a third for Garrett Wilson. I mean, the wide receiver five, according to the community, we've seen the strides and steps that he's t- taken with a Joe Flacco, with a Zach Wilson. What happens if he does get a Derek Carr? What happens if he does get an Aaron Rodgers? I mean, he skyrockets even more. So I'm really excited about that, that um, trade as well. Another guy you can kind of go out for, Jalen Waddle, right? I mean, Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddle, all these guys. Once again, Tua missed a lot of time. What happens if Tua plays the whole season there, right? I think we this would easily be a value, and people would be going out and trying to get that. All depends also. You have to keep in mind, when you're at the 102 and you're saying, okay, what am I looking for? Do I want to trade back, or do, do I want to trade back and try to get a JSN? Or try to get a Quinton? Or do I get an established wide receiver like a Garrett Wilson, like a Jalen Waddle, and then say, okay, you know what? I'd rather have somebody that's a little bit more proven in my thought process. So keep that in mind right there. Running backs for me, I would say Jonathan Taylor at the 102. If you feel more comfortable with Jonathan Taylor over Jameer Gibbs, kind of see that's an even trade as well. And then Kenneth Walker. I feel really, really confident with both of those guys. I think there's also there could be a, a little bit of a tier gap when it comes down to the 103, 104, depending on how you guys rank your guys. And I mean, that just makes sense. There's no tight ends, first of all, you're going to get at the 102. There's no damn way you're going to make a trade for a tight end and giving away the 102. So definitely keep that in mind. But these are some players uh, I would be looking to trade away for, trade away or trade to get the 102 or vice versa. So yeah, I, I like I like some of these guys here. Yeah, let's go to the 103. Honestly, though, the 103 and the 102, I I think they're very evenly valued, and you're going to see a lot of the same. And that's a lot of exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's going to be a lot of pieces that are very interchangeable well, think, and fluid. I think specifically these two pieces because people know in a super flex league, I can get Bryce Young or I can get CJ Stroud. So I think specifically the 102 and the 103, you're going to see a lot of deals that are pretty pretty evenly. You talked about Kyler Murray. I think you can do that with the 103 as well. Who do you want, guys? Do you want Kyler Murray? Do you want Bryce Young? Do you want CJ Stroud? Do you want the proven fantasy asset? Or do you want a player that you believe could, you know, develop into that? Uh, if you're trading for um, the 103 and you're moving Kyler Murray, you're assuming that these quarterbacks are going to be good because we know that Kyler Murray is already a good fantasy quarterback. And you're assuming they're going to land in, in spots that you like. I also put Justin Fields there with the 103 because I don't think it's completely out of of the range of possibilities i'm not saying you can do it straight up but you can see here again we're only using keep trade cut as a reference it's not a bible and we don't really use it that much when it comes to justifying trades but just to show you guys and you know a lot of people use it as a reference point you can get to a point where 103 and justin fields are the main pieces in a trade maybe you add a second maybe you add you know a player worth that value i think you can get that kind of deal done and I i had the same running backs as you Kenneth Walker, Jonathan Taylor. I think both of those are, are again, if you have the 102 and the 103, unfortunately, for the 102 owner, it's they're kind of worth the same exact thing. Yeah, um, exactly. I will say at the 103, though, is where I would consider a tight end. Okay. And that's Kyle Pitts. I would consider going to get Kyle Pitts. Um, I feel better about starting this conversation at the 104 for Pitts. Yes, because then I know that I haven't missed out on these top quarterbacks in a super flex format, Young and Stroud. And again, guys, Kyle Pitts is only 22 years old. <laughs> it's, there's no reason to have any hate for Kyle Pitts thus far. 
Um, but I think that is a better conversation to start at the 104. But yeah, I would say in general, what we've learned is that the 103 and the 102 are pretty much exactly the same value-wise. Yeah, and I'll just start from the tight end position there, kind of picking off there, because I did have Kyle Pitts as a 104 trade option. I think that is a perfect even trade for where you can come, when you can go there and say, okay, I'm really happy to do that. Because when you think about it, it's Bijan, CJ, and Bryce. I think we all agree that we're going to be taking one of those quarterbacks in my opinion, over Kyle Pitts. Yeah, and there, there are some people out there position. who are Will Levis, Anthony Richardson there, right? We're not comfortable with that. Exactly. But there are people out there who can make that that argument. Exactly. So 104 here in the quarterback position. So for me, I would definitely say you can start the conversation with a Deshaun Watson here. I think it's a little bit too early. I'm more comfortable going at the 105 for Deshaun Watson. And I think right here at the 104, it's a little bit difficult because you can go... Based off the keep trade cut and how the community is viewing people, you see Deshaun Watson, which is still a bit of a gap. And then the next person in the keep trade cut rankings is Dak Prescott, which is a massive, massive tier down when you ba- when you go based off the value on keep trade cuts. So remember, sure. try not to use this as too much of a Bible, but kind of use it as a reference. So 104 Deshaun Watson, maybe you throw in a piece there. In the quarterback position, 104, I think you can start off here in the wide receiver position with T. Higgins, potentially. Once again, you might have to throw in a little a little bit, maybe like an end of the third type feel. But I think a, a guy that I feel that's pretty even, but at the same time, based on how you value him, Devonta Smith. So now the question is, I think this is where you start to ask the question. Do I want Devonta Smith right now or JSN? Because JSN, you could potentially get at the 104 if you want, depending on Either you're drafting based off needs or you're drafting based off of, you know, because usually it's Bijan, CJ, Bryce. Then he can either go JSN or or Gibbs, right? So that's where you have to question yourself. Another guy you have is two other guys. I would say DK Metcalf and Drake London are also good even trade values. Once again, do you have JSN higher than some of these guys in your dynasty rankings? Uh, kind of take that into evaluation. At the running back position, I think you can start here with Travis Etienne. I think that, feel, that feels pretty fair, getting a Travis Etienne right there. And then CMC, if you're in a win-now position, you know, do you want Jameer Gibbs or CMC? I think we would all say that we want CMC, especially in the San Francisco 49ers. He's 26 years old, but I think you can definitely start at that, at that point trying to get CMC at the 104. Yeah, and I think the 104 and the 105 as well are very similar. <laughs> yeah, Different value, are. right? Because yeah. the, the 102 and the 103 right now, you're getting – values from a calculator based on in Superflex getting one of those two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. The 104 and the 105 is where we see a teardrop after the 105, I think, because you can get Jameer Gibbs or you can get JSN at least. Exactly. That is the consensus thought right now. You might not feel that way who's watching, but that's what we have seen. So the 105 is going to be quite similar. I agree. I think the 105 is where you should start to target Deshaun Watson. Um, so that's a very, very possible trade. You can do a straight swap according to keep trade cut. Um, I think you can also go out and look at Dak Prescott. If you're a win now team, would you rather have Dak Prescott right now or Jackson Smith and Jigba? I would go out and pretty confidently say that most people would say Dak Prescott right now in a super flex format. But um, I think that that's also worth looking into. I, I personally think you might be able to get Dak Prescott plus a piece right now based off of how he performed to end the season running backs for me i'm not saying i don't want christian mccaffrey but the only running back i would go trade for is probably travis Etienne right now at this point and i know people will have different opinions there but if i can send the 105 for travis Etienne, i will do that I don't really want to do CMC. There is that scenario which in with you, you know, in which you are a win now team. Right. Sure, you could consider that. Um, but we're trying to project, guys. You know, people always comment, they're like, oh, Derrick Henry, over a thousand yards, five years in a row, right? <laughs> Ten touchdowns. Like, okay. All right, Mike. Fantasy would be easy if we knew what they did, <laughs> right? We gotta project what they're going to do. Um and I don't want to bet on Saquon. Like, I think you get Saquon with 105. I don't want to take second half Saquon. Not not to disrespect him, but I just don't think he's worth this much right now. Okay. Um, if you look at the wide receiver room, very similar to what you said, I think Drake London is is a realistic possibility here. Do you want Drake London or do you want JSN? I, I want JSN. 
So I'm probably, Question, if I'm man. at the 105, mm -hmm. the 104, if I can get Jason, I'll probably stick and pick. Um, outside of that, if you want wide receiver, I, yeah, I'm definitely down. Like, give me, give me Drake London. Give me Drake London right. if Jansen's on the board. Um, if you need tight end, again, I think Kyle Pitts. You can also have the conversation around Kyle Pitts here where, hey, you know, Kyle Pitts underperforming, people not valuing tight ends. Kyle Pitts is just as valuable in my eyes as a JSN. Just as valuable in my eyes as like the elite wide receivers that we're talking about. So I would be willing to do that. And then Mark Andrews. I think Mark Andrews is getting some massive disrespect. I'd be mm -hmm. willing to to grab him with the 105 as well to shore up that tight end position. Uh, now, the risk here is assuming Lamar Jackson is going to be back. Mm -hmm. I think he is. Mm -hmm. I, I struggle to see a scenario in which he's not, but uh, every anything single is day possible. It feels like it's getting further and further away. I know, but, staying, but this happens every offseason. Does we feel like someone's not gonna be there and then they end up being there? So what are you thinking at the one hundred six? Yeah, one hundred six for me. Once again, this is where there's a teardrop, by the way. Yeah, once again, all, some some of these things are. So for me, one thing I did have similar, and I think I think it is the quarterback position. I did have Dak Prescott in the one hundred six. I feel a little bit more comfortable getting Dak there. Um, okay. In, in the quarterback perspective, the running back perspective, I think you can see that, like you said, the teardrop. You see people like the one hundred six trying to get a Josh Jacobs. Right. Yeah. That, then you question yourself. Do you want Gibbs, a younger guy that's going to be on a, on a rookie contract that could probably land well, at the 106? Sorry to interrupt. I don't think you're getting Gibbs. Oh, right. Exactly. But like either Gibbs is gone and you're saying, OK, I need a running back and I, I won't be able to get I won't be able to get Jameer Gibbs. Can I get so right. I trade away and try and get Josh Jacobs? But at the same time, you're questioning is like, dang, I don't know. Another guy you can get is Austin or trade away or trade for either way. Austin Eckler. I think it's there. You might have to throw a little bit more into it. Another guy that 27 years old, do you want to really invest in him right now? But a PPR monster, you know, he was leading the league in receptions in the running back room and, and, and yardage there. So I would definitely consider. Let me ask you this, because you and I both are very hesitant on Austin Eckler. Mm -hmm. Would you do this trade? Would you rather have Eckler or the 106? I would rather have the 106. Same. But if Just somebody sure we're on again, the same page, but we are showing people options. If somebody's out there saying I need, really need a running back, Austin Eckler not understanding the thought process of Eckler on his last year of his contract, twenty seven, about to be twenty eight years old, I think I'm willing to move on from Austin Eckler. And the wide receiver room, uh, I see Stephon Diggs from the one oh six. Uh, and I think that's pretty fair, in my opinion. You know, Stephon Diggs with Josh Allen still has a couple more years in his contract. I think there's a couple more options you could get at the wide receiver room here, but I think it's a little bit shaky, right? It sure. goes from, a, you know, a 29-year-old receiver to like a 20, well, really like 31, you know, so it's not that big of a gap. But I guess in age in the fantasy world, that's pretty big, I would say. In the tight end position, if you're a win-now team, I think 106 for Travis Kelsey. You're yeah. trying to get that. You're trying to. You're trying to win right now. Get Travis Kelsey from the 106. Do I do that myself? I don't. I wouldn't do that. But I know a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, I actually, I talk about him a little bit later. I'll tell you where my my yeah. line is. But once I'll again, based off like, of yeah. this calculator, based off of how the community is valuing him, and someone says, "Yeah, I'll take Travis Kelsey for the 106 right now." I would rather have the 106, a younger wide receiver, a younger yeah. quarterback. It can be anything. Travis Kelsey is 33 years old right now. I'd rather move on from him, but if I can get it, if I can get the 106 for him, sheesh. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the 107. I, I see it this way. If you need quarterback in this 23 class, I see it like this. I'll take Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. I'll take them over Daniel Jones, but I will probably take Daniel Jones over Anthony Richardson and over Will Levis. So yeah, I think that's so where tough. that line is, that Daniel Jones line. I don't see a scenario in which he's not a long-term giant after what happened this year is he going to lead you to Super Bowl? i don't think so but i mean he's probably going to so. be there long term <laughs> so i think this is a point where it's like okay yeah let me go get a daniel jones for the 107 i think that's fair value um i i have seen people pay an absolute premium for daniel jones i don't like i don't like that i don't but like i think either. i think this is where you start to say all right do i want i mean daniel jones showed a lot this year and you know, still has not gotten that franchise wide receiver to play alongside. So would you rather have, because this is where you're meeting that territory, Will Levis, Daniel Jones, Anthony Richardson, Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones is a player that you're taking there. And I also think you can consider Tua here. This is what this is the first pick of these, of these you know, first rounders where, where Tua 
I'm comfortable with it. Badaki's comfortable with it. If you're not comfortable with it, fair enough. But in a super flex format, how does Tua fail outside of injuries? And I know you can say, well, how is he going to stay healthy? I think they're going to figure that out. The NFL is putting in more and more rules each year to protect the quarterback position. I think he's going to be fine. Just freak accidents happen, guys. But when you have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle on your team, who knows who else they draft this year? Yeah. You already got Teron Armstead, who's going to be healthy. Now this year, your your franchise left tackle. It's hard to see if a scenario in which Tua fails. I mean, if he had been healthy, he would have been a top five finishing points wise quarterback in in fantasy football. It's hard to fail with those weapons. Now, I would I would agree with Badaki on running back. I think the one hundred six, one hundred seven, Josh Jacobs is kind of your ideal your ideal running back to target there. I don't want Eckler. That's why I didn't put him in this conversation, but right. you could also consider that. If you need a wide receiver, and to me, this is the ideal trade if you're moving the 107, because I, uh, unless JSN is available, I don't think he's going to be available at the 107. Mm-hmm. I think everyone in Dynasty is like probably 104. JSN's gone. After JSN, I will take Jamison Williams over the rest of the wide receivers in this class. I'll take James Jamison Williams over Jordan Addison. I'll take him over Quentin Johnston. I know we see that one a little bit differently, but one of my favorite wide receivers in last year's class. And what we said was have realistic expectations in year one. And now I'm going on Twitter and people asking why Jamison Williams didn't play over 25% of snaps in a single game. Me? And I'm like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, why do you you think like you use some context clues here? Um, This is where I think Jameson Williams, you can go out and get him. And he's taken a little dip as well. Um, He's wide receiver 17. He was higher than that. I think around wide receiver 13, 14, maybe that continues. Maybe you can get him for the one Oh eight. And if you need a tight end, I don't think the one Oh seven is a pick. I would be. I'd be willing to move. I mean, I would probably take a shot on Anthony Richardson here over a tight end that you get uh, or a Quentin Johnston or an Addison here at the 107 rather than a tight end you can get. So that's where I would draw the line. Okay. Uh, I don't, again, I don't think you can okay. get hits or Andrews for the 107. And that's why I've, I've left them out of that conversation. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right. The 108, once again, very similar, kind of like what Zach said, Tua and Daniel Jones here. I think that's a very fair, even trade. You, you question yourself, you know, what, what I think, as a Giants fan, I think it's mind-boggling that Daniel Jones right now in a rookie draft is valued at the 108, 107. Wow. Do I? I think as a Giants fan, once again, I would still take a chance on one of those guys at either of those positions. But if you believe in Daniel Jones more than I do, clearly, then not you specifically, Zach, but the community, go for yeah. it. Yeah. I uh, think what's interesting about him is his rushing upside that we saw this year. Kind yeah, of exactly. Completely untapped. But, you know, again... No, no franchise wide receiver yet. It's impressive. It's it impressive. Is. It but is impressive. It is still Daniel Jones. <laughs> it is, it, exactly. It is still Daniel Jones. And I think that that's the thought process. All right. For the running back room, I said Javante Williams for the 108 and DeAndre Swift. Javante Williams with this, this ACL injury is a little bit shaky. So if somebody does, mm. if somebody is out there willing to do that, I'm happy to take once again, Quentin and Addison, um, you know, Will Levis or an Anthony Richardson just based off of those guys' upside. So to, to clarify, just to make sure we're on the same page, you're saying you would sell Javante Williams. Exactly. For the 108. For you don't the want 108. to invest for Javante at this price point. Exactly. Same thing. Too and that would be risk. the same okay. thing to be said with DeAndre Swift based on the okay. question marks. I like where injuries. we're going here. Yeah. So I really like um, having the 108 over Javante and DeAndre Swift. At the wide receiver room, this one I think is really also interesting, but also kind of a risk. You, once again, Jordan Addison. Could that be a Keishon Boutte? It, could that be a Quentin Johnson? Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup. The same thought process as the running back room. I would rather maybe pivot to a younger a younger position, uh, these younger wide receivers, to kind of say, you know what, I'm kind of switching it up. I'm kind of rebuilding. Both trades are even. Both guys are fair to kind of – you know, swap them in whichever way you want sure. and vice versa. If you want to do a win now type role, Cooper cups, exactly. there, you know, I mean, it's good context for, for whatever direction your team is in. Exactly. In the tight end position, I would agree with Zach. I'm not comfortable taking a tight end at the one Oh seven, but I think this is a sweet spot for TJ Hawkinson. You saw okay. him. He's my tight end three right now. I'm not sure what he is for you. You see him take yeah. that big leap here. Still only 25 years old. Do they really invest in a wide receiver two after Adam Thielen? Or do they just say, you know what, thank you so much, Thielen. We're going to rock with K.J. Osborne. 
And then has just worries me is if they invest in a wide receiver. Exactly. But I mean, we'll even, if they invest the draft, in, but. even if they do invest in a wide receiver, I think TJ mm-hmm. Hawkinson really demands a well, lot of stuff there. Well, it depends on what the wide receiver is. Let's say with their first round pick, which we have seen and which we've talked about. What mm-hmm. if it's Zay Flowers in the first round? What if it's Addison? What if it's I just don't Johnson? Know it. What if it's Downs in the first round? I'm thinking more of like. That changes things for me. What if like second, what if it was a third round? Parker Washington, Xavier Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I'm saying like an impact for high sure. draft capital receiver. I definitely, I definitely see those guys definitely impacting and then be, yeah. being a little bit more hesitant. But if you're looking at some of the guys in the second, maybe late second, early third, I think I'm still investing in TJ Hawkinson here at the 108. Yeah, I can see it. The issue I have with TJ and investing it with him here is I feel like I can go get a Pat Fryam youth, a for Goddard che- for cheaper, a Kittle. For sure. Uh, you know, yeah, for a lot, a lot cheaper, a Dulcich or an Njoku. That's why I have, I didn't put Hawkinson in the video because I'm like, I can see why he's valued that way, but I feel like there's other options, you know, I that mean, I can, it's almost like you're a GM. Where do I sure. want to spend my capital? Sure. I'm not sure I want to spend it I guess I would just rebuttal position. there. TJ Hawkinson, 25 years old, Pat the Dragon, 24 yeah, no, I get years it. old, you know, like, I get it. So many different ways. No, but I'm saying I don't think we've seen Pat's. I don't think we've seen him fully unlocked or unleashed just yet. I hear you there. And I can get him cheaper. So that's, but I I don't think it's a bad idea. I'm just saying it's like, I'm struggling to know what to do. All right. So let's move on to the 109. I could be wrong. And again, this is where we don't understand trade calculators perfectly. We don't understand (laughs) how they value players. And I I just think algorithms are difficult when you're talking about players. Um, but apparently you can get Daniel Jones for the 109. I don't think that's possible. I don't think anyone's giving up Daniel Jones for that. Maybe they will in your league, though. Maybe, so maybe. if possible, then go do that. If you need a running back, again, at the 109, there's not a... So Badaki was showing you players like I would rather have the picks than these players. I think you could put some of those players here as well. I don't want to. I don't want to trade for a running back with my 109. I don't. I want to stay put. I want to take... Addison, if he's there, I want to take a chance on Richardson if he's there. I would rather do that than trading for a running back without knowing draft capital yet and without knowing how free agency is is going to roll over. So I think if anything, Badaki and I can be on the same page outside of those. I think Josh Jacobs was was a cut up cut off point. After Josh Jacobs, yeah. we don't want to trade for a running back. But no. yeah, if no. if I can trade away Javante Williams and DeAndre Swift for the one hundred nine, I'm I'm doing that as well. When you look at the wide receiver position. I mean, maybe you can get Jordan Addison at the 109. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, it's based if on those, draft capital. Yeah, if those big three are off the board, and when I say big three, I mean JSN, Jordan Addison, and Quentin Johnston. If those big three are off the board and you're at the 109, I don't think it's crazy to say Jerry Judy is the next best wide receiver. I'll take oh, Jerry okay. Judy over, uh, over Kayshawn Boutte. Right now, I'll take Jerry Judy over Zay Flowers as much as I love Zay Flowers. And I think a lot of people are not paying attention to what happened at the end of the season for Jerry Judy. Jerry, agreed. Especially with Sean Payne coming in. Ooh. Yeah, I still prefer, sorry, prefer Addison or Johnson over Judy. Right. But if those big three are off the board... I'd be comfortable to say, all right, fuck it. Let's let's go get Jerry Judy. I like the talent, and I think Sean Payton can absolutely... I mean, Sean, don't forget, guys. Sean Payton turned Michael Thomas into a wide receiver one. Not to disrespect Michael Thomas, but the wide receiver one. I'm not saying that will happen with Jerry Judy, but I think there's a very possible top 12 year for Jerry Judy coming into to next season with Sean Payton there. I and it. I don't think Sutton is someone that I'm worried about. I love it. Um, I also will take Christian Watson mm, Okay. if those big three are gone. I'll take Christian Watson over uh the rest of the wide receiver class if you need wide receivers so i think you can look at doing that and this is the earliest i know people will disagree but i remember i said earlier i have a cutoff point for travis kelsey this is the earliest i want to send away to grab kelsey i feel confident at this point if those big three wide receivers are off the board that we've talked about, mm. there's not going to be a player on the board that's going to help me more in the next two years in Dynasty than Travis Kelsey will. will. Right. Like I said, there's a line in the sand, and this right here at the 109 is where I'm at first comfortable to send send this pick away for Travis Kelsey. But it says you need to pay more. I would not pay more than the 109. <laughs> right. that's, that's the most I would pay. 
And if you can't get Travis Kelsey, then then I'm not going to pay a higher price than that. So no, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely I definitely see that. Um, but it all depends on that person that loves Travis Kelsey that has been tied in mm-hmm. one for the past couple of years. Patrick Mahomes' you, favorite target. You know, like that's going to be the they, argument. If they have Kelsey, they're probably not going to move him. But yeah. I'm just saying, like I don't. I'm not going to pay the 106, seven, eight. I, I would rather take a shot on some of those. Why? I mean, think about in a startup. Would I rather have Jason? Or Kelsey? Would I rather have For sure. Gibbs or Kelsey? Would I rather have Johnston, Addison, or Kelsey? I don't think I want to go Kelsey. I hear so you. that's it's tough there. I hear you. One ten guys. The quarterback room. This one's a little bit shaky because there is one. I will. Okay. Okay. Let me start off by saying. 110 for Kenny Pickett. I think you can get Kenny Pickett at the 11, at the 12. I think there's a gap yeah, there for Kenny Pickett. But the one interesting person, I do believe that you either you believe in him or you don't believe in him, and that's Trey Lance. 110, Trey Lance. I think that mm-hmm. is a sweet spot. Does he win the job? Does he not win the job? What is what, Who do you prefer? Now, I question... Let's talk the, about that quickly. Go ahead. Right. I was going to say, I question the community now. Anthony Richardson on the board... Mm-hmm. Exactly. At the one ten, do you with Anthony Richardson taken in the top ten to the Panthers? Do you go mm. Anthony Richardson or Trey Lance there? <sighs> <laughs> you don't know. I no, don't I, know. I, Man, if here's the thing, I don't even need Trey Lance to be the starter in San Francisco. I just need to know that he is a starter somewhere, and I like him as a prospect right. better than Levis and Richardson. Right. But if we head into the offseason and it's going to be a quarterback battle between Lance and Purdy, you almost have to kind of go. You almost have to go with Richardson if he goes top 10. Exactly. I mean, do, would, let, let me ask you this. I know you're not a massive Will Levis guy. Will Levis mm-hmm. falls you at the 110. You know he has the starting job, though. You have to start the conversation. Yeah. It, it's, it's a real. I don't know my answer yet, but yes, you have to. You have to start discussing if you go Levis over Lance. Yeah. So I think that's the sweet spot here for Trey Lance, all depending on how you feel about Trey and if you think he's going to win the job and who is also available at the 110, you know? If if Trey Lance wins the job in San Francisco, you will regret trading away the 110. I, I just know that for sure, yeah. without a doubt. If he wins that job and he's a starter for at least the next two years, you will regret it. You what if will the quarterbacks, absolutely regret it. What if the quarterback's off the board? Jordan Addison's there. Are you... I doubt. Actually, I doubt he will fall there. Kayshawn Boutte to the Giants in the first. No, I'm still going Trey Lance. You're still going to go Trey, even with the yeah. I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. Why we, uh, running tough. back room? And like Zach said, there's a cutoff of some of these guys that we feel really confident in. Um, so these are some running backs that I am trading away to acquire the 110. Ramondre Stevenson, right now, you um, is really fair value for the 110. And then also Tony Pollard. I think you have to throw in maybe like a fourth round or a late third round, whatever the case may be. But the way Tony Pollard finished the year, he's currently RB14. If Zach Charbonnet is at the 110, if Kayshawn Boutte is at the 110, if some of, any one of those names, are, Zay Flowers is at the 110 with some good draft capital, I'm happy to take any of those guys over a Tony Pollard personally. And just to add on to that, because I think this is really good advice. Some people are going to say, what do you mean? Like, Ramondre Steve, what do you mean? Like, Tony, like these guys, you the are, landscape. you are, no, what, I, I, what I'm trying to say is like, you are, what did you pay for Ramondre Stevenson? He was a third round pick probably. Yeah, there you go. What did you pay for Tony Pollard? You are right now cashing in. This is like the stock market. You hit on Apple in 2000. Now you want to cash in and diversify somewhere else. So um, I, I like that move. I really yeah. like that move. I think that's a smart move. I yeah. can't believe Ramondre is already 25. Like we talk about, he's already 25. <laughs> he's 25 years. Years is Ramondre old. older than Josh Jacobs? Is that true? Older than Josh Jacobs? Mm, let me, I can definitely You see. keep going. Keep going and I'll, I'll double check. You yeah. keep going with the, with the one. One thing I would say about the running back room, guys, if you guys haven't watched that running back market video that I put out, I would definitely encourage you to watch that because once again, I'll name the, the running backs that we are comfortable and we believe that their landscape is not going to change. Jonathan Taylor, Kenneth Walker, Travis Etienne, Brees Hall, CMC, and Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs. Those are the seven guys we're comfortable with outside. I mean, to invest in and trade for in, in this year's 2023 class because we believe Josh Jacobs is going to resign. We believe Saquon Barkley is going to resign, and the rest of those guys are in longer contracts. So 
keep that in mind. Okay, Why? so Josh Jacobs is 12 days older than <laughs> Andre <laughs> Stevenson. <laughs> Oh, wow. man, that's crazy. Um, in the wide receiver room for me, I think the first guy I can think of, the first guy I saw is Michael Pittman. But I think it goes either way. Uh, do you believe in Michael Pittman? Do you want to invest in him? Does CJ go there? What quarterback goes there, right? You know, is, is Zay Flowers there that goes to a better team? I think it just really depends on on who you believe in and who you want. Kayshawn Boutte there. Do you go with him? Uh, I think there's so many question marks, but I I'm, I think this is an even trade, a literal literal even trade. So if you want to yeah. be done with Michael Pittman, then you can move on. And for the tight end position, I think this is a great spot to draft Michael Mayer. This is where, and I personally think it could potentially begin at the one at the 108, 109. But I think this is where I would say I would encourage. This you feels saying, good here. Yeah, it feels really feel good like right here. But depending on the draft capital, yeah. If he goes even higher than what maybe we expect, I think 108, 109 could be a sweet yeah. spot too, depending on who's available. All right, on to the 111. When you look at quarterback, um, yeah, Kenny Pickett, Trey Lance is kind of what you're looking at there. Kenny Pickett apparently is worth more than the 111. Uh, honestly, if I need quarterback, I'm assuming Levis and Richardson are gone at this point. I, I would take a shot on Pickett here. I'll take a shot on Pickett for the 111. I don't think yeah. you're going to be in a super flex league that feels like a pretty good deal for a first round quarterback who who went on a little run 7 and 2 to end the year. Running back again, I just can't advise doing any trades where you're receiving running backs at this point with the running backs that you could get. Yeah. Knowing free agency, we talked about that. I mean, for example, I just traded away JK Dobbins in one of our leagues for the 111. So I'm kind of following my own advice there, saying like, hey, like these guys, like will someone come in and compete with JK? What will free agency look like? I am going to go ahead and I can take that 111. I can draft a running back or I can just do best player available. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. If you need wide receiver, I think this is ridiculous that you can even get this done. But apparently you can get Jahan Dotson for the 111. Uh, I like that. You can? I I like it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then then go do that. I mean, I would definitely <laughs> prefer Jahan Dotson at the 111 over the other options that are, are likely to be there. You can add Traylon Burks and George Pickens to that list if you're able to get those deals done. And like Badaki said at tight end, this is where you draft Michael Mayer. Uh, if you need a tight end, you don't trade for a tight end with the with the 111. You go get Michael Mayer here and, and uh, ride it out, assuming he gets first-round draft capital. Yeah, no, definitely makes sense here. Okay, so the 112 to close it off here at, at the turn, at the quarterback position. The one guy I think you should get at the 112 is probably Russell Wilson. And now according to Keep Trade Cut, you can actually, what's what's an even trade is the 201. So what is the difference of paying the 201 and the 112? I get it, 34 years old, older, but I mean, kind of like we we're alluding to Jerry Judy. I mean, top 12 guy. Russell Wilson has, in his career, always been a top 10, top 15, really more top 10 quarterback, excuse me, top eight, I would even say, out of outside of two two years. Last year and the year where he um, broke his those fingers, had that weird injury in his hands. He's always been a top quarterback. He's getting Sean Payton here. I know Javante Williams in question, but he's Sean Payton, Jerry Judy, Greg Dolchich, and Cortland Sutton. I think he takes the next step, and he's back at that level where he was at when we thought he was going to be when we were coming into the 2022 season. So I think that's a sweet spot if you do need a quarterback, depending on who is available there. Um, I would also agree with Zach in the running back room. I'm not comfortable taking anyone here at the at the, at the the 112. I mean... So just to clarify, you're not comfortable trading for a running back with for, the 112. Exactly. Without knowing draft capital. It, exactly. I mean, I can't, yeah. I can't see anyone. I mean... I'm looking at names. Maybe you can, if you want and you feel comfortable, a J.K. Dobbins. I doubt. I think he would probably be less than that. I would probably also say a Joe Mixon, but no one wants to pay the 112 for Joe Mixon right now. If you want to trade for Javante Williams, uh, based off of what was even earlier, I think you can get him at a cheaper price than the one, than I think it was the 110, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I'm not necessarily sure I want to invest in a running back at the 112. I would rather get somebody later on. Maybe Sean Tucker goes in in the middle of the second in, in your rookie drafts, or Zach Evans is there. You know, I'm looking more at a wide receiver here. 
I think the 112 is difficult because it's basically like a, I, I, the way I'm seeing it is basically like a second round, second round pick, right? So 112 for the wide receiver room is Hollywood Brown. I think that's also kind of a bit high in my personal opinion, even though it's even for yeah, me. And, and and you and I have talked about the cutoff point. A lot of people ask where's the cutoff point, and I think we kind of discuss it's right around the was it the one hundred nine. Yeah, around there. Or 110. 110 feels... The 11 and 12 feel very similar to the 201 and the 202. Exactly. So it's like, okay, do I go Hollywood Brown or do I go with Xavier Hutchinson that could potentially get better, that gets a decent draft capital, right? Or Or Zay Flowers, Josh Downs. Zay Flowers, exactly. Zay Flowers, Josh Downs, all those guys. So if you wanted to trade for somebody, Hollywood Brown could be somebody here at the 112, maybe to the 202 ish area and you believe in Kyler Murray and, the, and him going to be coming back. And even if for them to resign Hollywood Brown as well, uh, I'm also not investing in any tight ends at the 112 outside of Michael Mayer. If he does fall there somehow, but I'm not trading away. I'm not trading the 112 to get a tight end. Maybe I think there is a couple guys actually you could potentially get like Zach said, you know, Pat, the dragon has been unleashed. I mean, would you pay 112 for Pat, the dragon? I think you can get him cheaper. Personally, yeah, I don't think you should have to pay a first round pick for exactly. any of those guys. For any for any any one of these guys, I mean, I think the cutoff is probably right. At least for me, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews, TJ, mm-hmm. Travis, Kelsey, George Kittle, I think are first round guys. The rest are more yeah. second rounds. And a non tight end premium, I would struggle to pay a first round pick for one of those tight ends. Yeah. So I think it's just Michael Mayer right now is the guy to get at the one twelve is if he is available. But if not, then if not, you just punt the position. Like that once again, it's so difficult at the one twelve sure. to kind of see what is going to be a true value. Yeah. And you just and, and why don't we actually do this as well? Like we're we're not. I really don't like it when people are like go trade for next year's picks. Next year's picks are better. This is an endless cycle. Okay, <laughs> true. just like keep your picks and, and draft the players because typically they're good. Everyone last year told you the twenty twenty two class was average. It turned out to be incredible. Okay. Um, but I think from the 110 onwards is where you and I would say, yes, we would trade these picks. Maybe you could may, honestly, I think you could say the one eight onwards, the one Oh eight onwards. I will trade those picks for a random 24 first. The one Oh nine actually feels a okay. What out? What out? One Oh nine to one twelve. I will trade those away for a random 24 first. Not right, knowing without where knowing um, where that's going to be. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm actually yeah. really happy with that. I mean, yeah. One twelve. Give me a random 24. Maybe that falls into the top five or yeah. top eight. And people are trying to do that to me in leagues. And I'm just like, I don't want, to, I don't want to do that. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want your one twelve. You know. No, I like that. I like uh, that that feel that position there. But yeah, one twelve. Um, that that turn there on your rookie drafts is going to be who best player available, and that goes yeah. for every position. But I think the player that is of value at the one twelve in my eyes will probably be Russell Wilson, okay. for me. Um, other than that, I'm happy for anyone to go either way, whether that's trading that pick away or maybe just getting a player that they believe in, um, at the one twelve. Yeah. All right. So I have no idea how this video will be received. I don't know if you guys will <laughs> like it. I hope you like it. Hope so. so let us know if you enjoyed it. We could technically do a second round p- version of this. If people oh liked it, that'd be no, crazy. I mean, so many more. Scenarios. That would be fun. Yeah. There would be a lot of scenarios. Um, Comment down below what you think about this. Like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And we'll see you guys in the next video. All of Yo, what's good? Love. Thanks for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos. Watch now, it. You can also subscribe. Right now. If you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm-hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.